So I'm going to do how I winterize my outboard motor each winter, before each winter. And uh, it may not be every step that you should do with your particular motor, but this is what I do with uh, the one I have, and it's worked every year for me. Specifically, this Johnson Ocean Runner 150. It's a V6. Okay, so we're going to want to pull our plug so we can drain all the water out of this thing. And I'm going to leave the plug out for the winter in case I happen to take on any water. I don't think I will, but it can't hurt. And I'm going to put this somewhere where I will not lose it, and I'll remember to put it back in before I put it back in the water in the spring. So I'll let that drain. Uh, the first thing I want to do, which I've already done, is I want to top up all the gas have a full tank of gas and then add the appropriate amount of fuel stabilizer. This one treats up to 150 liters. I have about a 100 liter tank so I put put two thirds of that in. This Johnson is a two stroke and it's equipped with a VRO which requires that I have an oil reservoir where uh, I keep the oil that's injected in to the motor while it's running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to top up this uh, all the way to the top for the same reasons that I did the gas tank. And that's just to prevent any water from ending up in the oil by the springtime. Um, now what I'm going to do is hook up the uh, water line to the muffs, put them on, turn on the water. I'm going to run the motor for about 15 minutes. This will uh, guarantee that the actual stabilized treated fuel gets through the lines and through your carbs everywhere you want it to be so that it doesn't gum up over uh, over the winter. Okay, so you're going to want to get these right over top of your water pickup. Just like that. And I'm going to go turn the water on. Okay, I got a pretty good seal here, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and start this up. Have one of these while you're waiting. Got some plumbing antifreeze, or uh, it's called RV antifreeze. And the way I do this is I've done it this way a couple years. I just uh, cut a I cut a hole in the cap, one of these, and then I just uh, I wrap some. Uh, electrical tape around that just to uh, seal it a little bit better and I'm going to attach this to the bottle of uh, antifreeze attach the other end to the uh, muffs I just had on there while the engine was running and then I'm going to hold it upside down and punch some hole puncture some holes in the bottom of it let the air in I'm going to start the motor up and I'm going to run this whole container through and just before it's done I'm going to while it's running I'm going to try and spray the uh, storage spray, fogging spray, into the carbs to uh, to fog the carbs and hopefully stall out the motor. If that doesn't if that doesn't work, which it probably won't, because there's six separate uh, carbs, six separate intakes here. I'm going to uh, just cut the motor. Okay, so I'm just attaching this here. It's attached to the muffs here. The engine's warmed up. It should start up right away. So I'm going to flip this over, I'm going to punch some holes in it, start the motor. Uh, 
Hang on, Sally. Okay, so I just uh, ran one jug. Now I'm going to run a second jug through just to make sure I get lots, lots in there. Okay, so I wasn't going to shut down with just me spraying by myself. If I had a second can, I could have been spraying two at a time. Maybe that would have got it to stall it while I was spraying it, but at any rate, I got a coating inside all the carbs to some degree. Okay, on this Johnson, I'm able to pull off these caps right here. Same size as a socket, same size as your uh, spark plug. Pull this off. I've already done it on this side. I'm going to pull it off this side now, and this will let me have access to pour some antifreeze directly down in here just in case just just in case I didn't get uh, all the water run out of this thing so I'm going to tip it all the way up and then uh, I should use a funnel but I don't have one here but I'm just going to I got to get this out this one guy out and then I'm going to pour some antifreeze directly into each of these. Now I'm going to disconnect the spark plugs. And I'm going to spray the uh, fogging, fogging spray, engine storage spray in each cylinder for about uh, 5 to 10 seconds. Careful with the spark plugs, don't drop them and don't uh, whack the ends of them when you put them down because they should be specifically gapped for your motor and you don't want to wreck that. Okay. Spray juice. It's a good idea to hold on to this little guy while you're spraying, just in case it goes shooting off into your cylinder. Okay, so there's two ways you can do this now. You can go over and just give the engine a little crank. If the pistons go back and forth a few times, that'll spread the uh, spray around the cylinder. Or you can put it in gear and then just hand crank your propeller. So I'm just going to go ahead and hand crank it because if I turn it over it's going to turn pretty hard and it's going to shoot crap out. If you're going to turn it over by, by, uh, with a key you should probably cover, cover these, have someone cover these all up with a rag while you do it. I'm going to do it this way so it's not going to be as uh, hard of a turn. <laughs> should do it. I also like to spray uh, spray a bit of the uh, storage spray on the tips of each of your uh, plugs before you put them back in. Get a good coating on there. One more thing I like to do too, okay, is take some of this silicon lube a silicon spray and I'm going to spray all over my plugs any rubber wires anywhere that'll help it from drying out over the winter and cracking it's also good uh, water repellent
this isn't gonna hurt anything, so you can give it a good, uh, a good coating. Like I said, anything that's rubber. Okay, so I've got everything back together in here now. I'm gonna put the top back on. Um, my next step will be to get this thing right into its little storage spot for the winter. Luckily, I have a nice shelter here that it fits nice and snugly into. Um, then I'm going to pull the batteries once I have the motor down as far as I can in place. Now I'm just about done. I'm going to uh, I'm going to pull this battery out. I'm going to bring it down to my house, and I'm going to keep it there on a maintainer over the winter time. Okay, so I've got my battery home here now, and I'm going to hook it up to this maintainer. I'll leave it on for the winter. There we go, it's charging. Once it's all charged up, it will switch over to charged maintaining and it'll just keep uh, topping up the battery's power throughout the uh, winter time, so it'll be good to go in the spring. If uh, you have any comments or suggestions or anything I missed, please post them and help others uh, you know, winterize their outboards. Thanks.